Hello everyone, welcome to this YouTube channel for this month's edition, the month of September. And I am GAC. Stay tuned, okay? So for today, we'll be talking about the concept of sexual purity. When we talk about concept, we mean what is this sexual purity? That's a simple explanation. What is this sexual purity really what is it all about now sexual purity is more than just i am a virgin it's more than just ah is in my mind it's more than that now two things i talked about the virgin part now let me explain a lot of youth, a lot of teenagers, a lot of people don't understand this. Sexual purity is not virginity. Now, for you to have your virginity, that means you have a sense of wholeness. It's just like, okay, you're, it means you have not been tempered with. But your purity is deeper than just being tempered with something or not do you understand now sexual purity starts from the heart sexual purity starts from the heart and it begins when an individual comes to the knowledge of the truth and that truth is jesus personified there is no way you will say you are an advocate of sexual purity or you stand for sexual purity and then you are just using the traditions of men, you are just using your ideas, you're just using your philosophies or your your own kind of protection, okay? I am not going to go out in the night, I'm going to be doing this so time and then I'll not watch this movie, no. That's self-righteousness. It begins when you come to the knowledge of the truth and that truth is Jesus personified. Do you understand? Now, you can be a virgin and be very dirty. You know, this is a generation of people. We have people, youths, majorly. They think, okay. I can, in fact, some even believe I can masturbate. I can do all kinds of evil with myself. So long I do not meet any guy. So long I do not meet the other party. Then I am clean. I am sexually pure. Or so long I am not doing it physically. I'm just watching. I'm just passing. I just read a book. I am not committing sin. Now, beloved, do you know that you being a virgin is not as important as you being a sexual puritan? For you to be a sexual purity advocate, you can have your virginity intact. But for you to say, I am a virgin, you are not a sexual purity advocate. And that means you are not clean. And that means Jesus does not know you. Now, the concept of sexual purity. Purity is Jesus personified. Purity is his nature. Purity is his heart desire. Purity is what he wants everyone to have. Regardless of your race, your nationality, your religion, whatever, your intellect, it doesn't matter. Beloved, purity begins from the mind. When you make up your mind, ah, oh, okay, I've been doing this, I've been lost in, each time I watch this movie, I've been lost in, each time I read this book, I'll be lost, and then each time I look at this lady, dressing so bad and then my heart begins to my body it arouses me what do you do that is why 
you need Jesus. It begins from the heart. The decision starts with you. Okay, I need to accept Jesus. I am coming to the Lord. I need him to help me. When you come to the knowledge of the truth, when you come to him, he cleanses you, he purges you, he gives you a new garment. He he qualifies you to become an advocate of sexual purity. He gives you the enablement, the enabling power, the grace, all it takes to stand and to fight. Because sexual purity is war. A lot of people's destinies are truncated, destroyed because they have missed it. And if you have missed it in this aspect of sexual purity. You have the devil has cheated you big time. There is no two ways about it. Now, I want to explain some points. If you say you are an advocate of sexual purity, if you have accepted Jesus into your life, that's the first thing. Okay, the first step to sex to becoming sexually pure. Now, if you say that, if you've done that, the next thing is, it will reflect in your speech. You know, you are the, you become what you, you read, you say who you are, whether you like it or not, consciously or unconsciously. In your words, now take for instance, okay. A lady, Lady A, she watches some kinds of some kind of movies, and these movies, what they say is it's provoking, you know, and it's it's it stimulates, it arouses the body. Now, if then another lady, Lady B, she does not watch that, she 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 devotes her life to worship of god when i say worship i mean giving your all to him singing psalms to him living a well pleasing life you know pleasing him in your daily life praise the lord now these two parties if they go out lady a will definitely misbehave because she's going to say something that people will be like, it's, it's going to be strange to the hearing of people who are advocates of sexual purity. And then they will know that, ah, this person is not one of us. It's just like when you have stones in inside rice, if you are eating it, you will know, ah, this is a stone. And then you remove it and throw it. That's if you mistakenly use it to cook food. That is how it is. In your speech, it's going to expose you. So if you say you're an advocate of sexual purity and then you 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 watch some kind of things, you pretend you do some things that are really so bad, it's going to reflect in your speech. You cannot hide it. Just like the stones in rice. The next thing is dressing. You know, a lot of you would say, ah, God sees the heart or is the heart. We know he sees the heart and we also know that he sees the body. So what are you now saying? I am a youth like you and I'm speaking from the perspective of the youth. And I want you to understand that dressing has a very big role to play when it comes to sexual purity. You cannot say you are sexually pure and then you dress to, 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 to steer up. Things lost and evil in the hearts of men. Something is wrong. That's a strange spirit that's ruling you. You cannot say you are light when you when you when you dress and, and you put on the attire of darkness. You know, Moses in the Bible, they called him Pharaoh's son. Why? Because of his attire, his dressing. If you are an advocate of sexual purity, you must dress modestly. You must dress decently. You must dress to glorify God. In fact, as a sexual purity advocate, all you, in fact, everything about you is Jesus, Jesus, because you are, you are, you are representing the gospel. 
So your dressing will reflect. You're not going to dress anyhow that you lead people to hell. You will make, you will cause people to go and begin to, to, to begin to stir up lust in the heart of men. Or you cause them to begin to imagine evil. Praise the Lord. The third thing is terminologies. Now this is, this is, this is very, very, um, much linked with the first one, which is the speech, your terminologies, your th terminologies. Now, when you talk about terminologies, not thumb, terminologies, the terminologies here, like the key words you use in your sentences, when in your communications, when you're talking to people, those, how, how do you construct it? How are they being used? It's very key. They will know. They will get you from there. Ah, this is not one of us. She is not. She's not yet there. He is not one of us. They will know. Yes. It's, it's, it's as practical as anything. Now, some movies. There are some movies you cannot just watch as an advocate of sexual purity. See, let's not deceive ourselves. There are things you cannot do as a, an advocate of sexual purity because... You are not yourself. You are God's. Do you understand? You are God's property. You cannot just watch movies that, you know, it will be registered in your subconscious mind, then in your closet, in your secret place, when you're alone or when your mind is calm. And then when your body is calm, you will now begin to imagine evil and begin to think and ponder on them because you refuse to study the scriptures. You refuse to allow your mind to be preoccupied with the things of God. Watching th movies that that are so just, just so bad, pornographic movies and all, terrible. And this is the same thing as if you are the type that okay, you devote your time and everything to watching Christian movies. When I say Christian, I mean movies that make you makes one to pray, makes one to begin to hunger for heaven. Do you get those kind of movies? It will help your your purity life because you'll be prayerful, you be worshiping God, you'll be pleasing Him. You'll be happy. The angels will be rejoicing. Ah, Jesus will be happy. Now, yes, my daughter is doing this. Yes, my son is doing this. Are you pleasing God? Young stars need to really work on their sexual life. Because the devil uses that aspect to destroy and truncate a lot of destinies. Nowadays, people normalize sex and it's it's so alarming. It is terrible. These days, if you tell us, if you tell someone that, okay. Hmm? I am not involved. I am this. They will begin to tell you that, ah, she's lying, you know, he's lying, you know. All sorts of rubbish. Because their minds have been decayed. They've allowed socialism and all um, intellectual philosophy, ideas and all that to, to blindfold their eyes from, from the word of God, from the right way, from the right track. I tell you, as you're watching this, remember that you will stand before God one day and give account of your sexual life. And do you even know that the devil uses that aspect of your life to, to destroy and tie a lot of things? Wake up. Wake up. Any conversation that the person tells you, ah, I beg, drop Bible aside, my dear. Don't continue. Because anything that you leave the word of God outside, if you anything you remove God's word outside, he is not worthy of your time and attention. This is just the truth. Social media and so-called 21st century socialization should be tamed with God's word. And that is the Bible. You just go to show him and begin to watch things. You know, there was a day I, 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 I went to the social media and then that was Facebook. And then I saw this lady posted on her um, Twitter account page. And then she said, fornication is a sin. It is not fun. Repent. You needed to see the kinds of youth we have in our generation. You know, my heart, I, I was bleeding in my heart. My heart, my heart was paining me. Like, you know, I was like, God. Things have gone so bad that you see small, small girls, you know, people are don't even, because of school, because of, okay, you've gone to school, your parents 
Ah, so is 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 you going to school? You bring edu is education a sin? Is it a crime for you to be educated? Why have you chosen to 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 become so such a big disappointment to God? Do you know God has a plan for you? Do you know he made you for a purpose? He created you to do great things for him in his kingdom. Why are you now using it to serve the devil? And are you even aware that this world will end one day? Sexual purity is a very serious issue. You must begin with Jesus from the heart and then to affect other areas. That is just it. No two ways about it. Hey, beloved, are you worried? And you're saying, ah, I've missed it. I've done this. I've done that. There's no way for me. There is no way out. I tell you, there is a way out. And that way is Jesus. He said in his word, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is calling you this minute. Come unto him and receive a cleansing. So you can fight this battle of sexual purity because it is tied to the generational impact you will have in your own generation. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord help us in Jesus name. Amen. So let's pray together. In Jesus' name, I want you to take everything in your life to God in prayers. You that is feeling so guilty, tell him, Lord, have mercy on me. You that is feeling so dirty, tell him, Lord, I am sorry. Tell him, please, have mercy on me. Tell him, please, forgive me. Tell him, please, purge me. Wash me, O oh God. Wash me, O oh lamp of God. Tell him. Tell him to have mercy on you. And he will. He is always ready, willing to forgive you. Yes, tell him, confess everything to him and he will help you. I'm telling you, there is awesome power in the name of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus upon yourself. There's awesome power in that blood, that precious blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Blessed Savior, I want to thank you so much. Thank you, Abba Father, for your mercy. Thank you, O oh God, for this, your children, this, your son, this, your daughter, Oh God, I've come back home. Jesus, son of David, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You said in your word, if anyone is thirsty, let him come. And you will give he or she water. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God of mercy, they have come. They have come, oh Lord. Feed them. Give them the food. Give them the drink. Give them. They are thirsty, Lord. Fill them and feed their thirst in Jesus' name. Blessed God, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will hold our hands in Jesus' name. As many who are standing, Lord, I pray you will help them till the end. You will help us till the end. We will continue to walk with you in Jesus' name. That at the end of this life, at the end when the trumpet sounds or when we die, Jesus will not miss heaven in Jesus' name. Keep us, O oh God, in your mercy. Be merciful unto us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lest we ourselves should be a castaway after we must have preached the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us the grace to be ambassadors, O oh God, even in this perverse, dark, crooked world. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, beloved. Thank you for taking your time to watch this YouTube. I appreciate you so much. God bless you in Jesus' name. Do well to watch our other series on YouTube. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. You can also check our Facebook page, GAC. And then read the articles there. You will be blessed tremendously, no doubt. No doubt. You could also check my social media handle. It goes by the name Goam Anastasia Christabel. You could check that as well. And you will see messages 
inspiring messages, messages inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I pray that Jesus will help us, that we will not do this and go to hell in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless you. Take care in the name of the Lord. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah.